All right then, gang. So now we have JSON server running and watching our DB file. So we have these different endpoints. What I'm going to do now is try to fetch that data inside this use effect hook. And remember, that's going to run at the minute when the component first renders. And that's the only time it's going to run because we have this empty dependency array inside it. So we're just going to fetch this data once when the component first renders. Now, before we do that, what I want to do is empty all of the state from here because we're not going to use that anymore. And instead, we'll set the initial value of the blogs to be null. Then once we've successfully fetched the data from this file over here, we're going to update the state using set blogs with the data we get back. So let's make that fetch request. So we'll say fetch. And then we need an endpoint, which is this thing. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it inside a string right here. So that's a get request to localhost port 8000 forward slash blogs. Now, this returns to us a promise. And so I can tack on a then method. And by the way, we can't make this async. You can't use a wait inside this. If you wanted to externalize a function with all of this logic inside it and make that asynchronous, you could do but I'm not going to do that. I'm instead just going to use the then method. So this will fire a function once this promise has resolved. So once we have the data back and first of all, we get a response object. Now this response object isn't actually the data. It's just a response object. And in order to get the data, we have to do something with that response object. And this is just when we use the fetch API, this thing right here. So to get the data, we say response.json and this passes the JSON into a JavaScript object for us. Now we need to return this value right here. And then when we return this, this whole thing now returns another promise because this is also asynchronous and it takes some time to do. So what I do is tack on another then block, which is going to fire a function once this bit right here is complete. And then this function takes in as a parameter the actual data that this gets us. So it might seem like a long winded process to get the data, but it's just two steps. We get the response object, use the JSON method on that, and then tack on another then method whereby we get the data. So this data now is going to be whatever is in here in a JavaScript object format, or rather a JavaScript array because we have an array of data. So then, Let's for now just log this to the console console.log data. And in fact, just so we don't get an error, I'm going to comment out this stuff for now right here. So let me save that and I'm going to open up. Oops, not the source. I want the console inspect. And if I pull this over here and go to the console, we can see this data right here. So an array of two blocks. So all I want to do now is update the state that we have right here with this value. So to do that, remember, we can use set blocks. And this is not going to cause an infinite loop because remember, we have this empty dependency array. And that means only ever fire this function once on the initial render, not whenever the data changes. OK, so underneath where we log out the data, I'm just going to use the set blocks function, which is this thing right here. And then I'm going to pass in the data, which is what we have right here. So all we're doing is taking that array of objects and updating the blog state with that array. So then now we've done that, we could uncomment this, but there might still be an error here. And I'll tell you why in a second. First of all, let me save this. And then, yep, we can see this error over here. And it says cannot read property map of null. So what's going on there? Well, Right here, we're passing the blogs as a prop through to the blog list. And then inside the blog list, this is where the error is occurring. We're trying to map through the blogs that we pass through. Now, the blogs should be the data, right? And we've seen that in the console. So why is it not working? Well, it's not working because it takes a fraction of time to get that data. And initially, the value of blogs is null. And down here, we're passing in null when the application first loads in the browser. And so over here, blogs is null, and we're trying to use the map method on null at the very start. 
Once we get the data, it should work fine. But to begin with, until we have that data, we get that error. So how do we combat this? Well, really, we don't want to output this until we have a value for blogs. So what we could do is a little dynamic check here. I'm going to do curly braces around this because what we're going to do is some JavaScript. And remember, to do JavaScript inside the template, we need the curly braces. And all I'm going to do is say blogs and then ampersand. So this is logical and in JavaScript. So this will actually work now. And let me demo that and then I'll briefly explain it. So I've saved it and now over here, I'm going to refresh. And now we see it works, right? We get that data and we output it. But why is this working? Well, this is how we do a bit of conditional templating in React. Logical and evaluates the left first. And if this is false, it never even bothers with the right. So this to begin with is going to be null. And since null evaluates to false, it doesn't bother with the right hand side of the logical and and therefore it doesn't output this thing right here. That's the way JavaScript works. Now, if this evaluates as true, it doesn't output anything to the screen. That's not what we're doing here. But then what it does is move on to the right hand side of the logical and and evaluates this. And when it evaluates this, it outputs it to the screen. So the thing on the right is only ever going to be output if the thing on the left is true. And that's generally how we conditionally output parts of template. And we're going to see more of that as we go forward. But that right there is why it works. And that's everything we need to do. So what we're doing is fetching the data as soon as the component first renders. At that moment in time, once we have the data, we update the state right here. Once we update the state and it has a value, it outputs this and passes through that value. Then we cycle through them and then we render them to the DOM. So there we go. Let's just make sure this works again. Yep, all works. Now there's one more thing I want to do and that is to get rid of this thing to delete the blog because now if we're deleting the blog, it's just from local data. And yes, it will work because now we're storing this in local data in the state, but ultimately we're going to make delete requests to this file over here. So let me get rid of that functionality for now because we don't really need it anymore. So this handle delete function, I'm going to get rid of and then we can delete it from here as a prop as well. We don't need it there save that and then over in blog list we don't need handle delete and we don't need this button at the bottom to delete it either so let's save that yep now it's gone okay cool so next we're going to see more about conditional templates and how to output a loading message as we're trying to fetch the data